Well, I'm Alain Schröder. Uh, I'm from Germany. That's, I guess you can guess that from the name. Um, I'm going to talk about data mining PopCon. That's the popularity contest, which you probably know. Uh, this talk is going to be a bit technical after the beginning, so I don't know if I scare somebody off. I hope not. Um, I'm doing this currently as my master thesis at the University of Paderborn. So, um, well, it's still ongoing and it's not finished yet. Okay, um, what I'm going to talk, what is my motivation, why I'm doing this even? Uh, what is data mining? I'm giving a really short overview about that. Then uh, I'm going to my implementation up to now and what is going to come. Um, the privacy issues, I guess, that you can all think of, and at least I'm giving a little conclusion and outlook. Okay. So, uh, as we all know, Debian is really great. Uh, I think you already heard that lots of times today. We have uh, 11 architectures. We have a really easy installer. I even heard we have a graphical one yet, even if I never used it before, but uh, sounds good. <laughs> Um, we have localizations to like loads of languages. Uh, we are hi highly customizable to, uh, uh, you can guess, um, like Scola Linux or uh, Debmat, whatever. All these sub-projects they build on, on Debian. And uh, that's one of the features of Debian. Well, we have the best packaging system. Uh, I always like to uh, say, um, uh, at least RPM is no comparison to us, and uh, also uh, on Windows side or Mac OS side, there is nothing really which can even keep up. And uh, with the last installment, we shipped 18,000, well, more than 18,200 packages, which is quite a lot, and also one of the biggest problems. And, uh, well, that's why I'm saying Debian sucks. It doesn't suck any more than uh, any other Linux distribution out there, or even Windows or Mac OS, as I just said. But uh, just try to imagine you're a pretty new user to Linux, and you're trying to look for software. It's uh, pretty bad if you're trying that. Um, it's, well, a pain in the arse, whatever. <laughs> it's very unpersonal, and it's totally complicated. It's getting better in the last few years, and I'm going to show what, what the possibilities are. That's a shell um, using apt cache. Searching for burn CD, you get loads of hits. You have uh, KDE front end for burning CDs, backup manager, um, audio management and playback application. I don't know what that really has to do with uh, burning CDs, but uh, it's just hitting these, um, these two words I'm giving it and it displays it like every uh, disp dis package installer you can use now, the, the graphical ones, in Uptics, or uh, whatever, they are basically displaying things like this. So the next <coughs> better thing is debt tax. The problem is, um, yeah, Enrico. <laughs> the problem is knowing these. Uh, I, well, I know what ISO 9660 is, but uh, I guess lots of people don't. Uh, so, um, what what the heck is X11? If you don't, if you come from a Windows side or even use the Linux PC for the first time, it's like uh, what he what the heck? So, um, hmm? I have descriptions. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> well, uh, I'm having the next version of this, the smart search here. Um, it's much better. Actually, I'm pretty often using this because I like it. Um, you just put it in, your, your keywords in, you get a list. First, more or less like uh, um, what you get with AppCache. But then you also get um, um, wanted tags on the right side and available tags. The wanted are the ones which are also already selected. And the available ones are some you can still select and then go deeper. But Still, here's the little problem. Well, if, if there's a description now, it's, I guess, better. Um, yet that you can go deeper into the um, uh, search. Well, that you get better results. OK, that's what happened until now. So I guess you all know Amazon. 
So um, they are, if you, is Martin Kraft on a, here? I guess he would be very happy I'm making advertisements for him because it's his book. Um, if you're buying some book at Amazon or any other big website at the that moment, you get displayed other books on the, on the bottom which are uh, also bought by these people. Some people even say that's one of the big features of Web 2.0, uh, well, whatever. Uh, I think it would be a really nice feature for Debian to do something like this, showing people who already have installed these packages you're, already, you're having, they also like this or this, or they also install this and this. And what you might also know is Last.fm. They've recently bought by an American company, I think. Um, they're indexing music. They're showing you can give in like any artist you you know of, and they're showing similar artists to it. So uh, also it would be very nice to get shown similar um, packages. If I have like GNOME, uh, if I have Game, which I'm using pretty often, but I'm getting pissed off with, um, then I might like just to, to see, um, well, alternatives to it. Well, uh, the principle we, we need is uh, key ISS, keep it simple, stupid. Um, it's highly uh, um, discussable if, if that's good or not, but uh, I think it would be good to even offer it. Well, the, the goals are uh, to present as few packages as possible to the user, to uh, personalize the search so that um, packages you already installed are not shown, packages which are very likely to be fitting for you are shown and not any console tools if you're only using GNOME tools. Um, also, well, rank results after this. And um, well, the best thing would be, of course, present the right um, package for everybody first, but uh, I guess that's not really possible, but maybe we can get nearer to that. Okay, what is data mining? I don't know if anybody of you has ever heard of it. Well, heard, I guess, but it's always like a big blurb. Uh, it's used for huge amount of um, things, and basically it's just knowledge discovery and data, which it was called before. It's just amount of, it's ju just algorithms um, for discovering any connections in the data or um, drawing conclusions, whatsoever. I'm I'm giving I'm going to give a little example to the uh, few I'm going to present. Well, the algorithms you can find are either very simple or totally complicated, but um, they have to scale over a huge set of data. So usually uh, they are very CPU and I.O. In intensive, or at least one of them. So you're going to run into problems usually if, if you're going to use it on real data. Um, these algorithms are, of course, very sensitive to what you put in. Um, that's also the GIGO thing. Uh, it's called garbage in, garbage out. If you're just throwing garbage at the algorithm, of course, you're just going to get um, garbage out, some connections between whatever, your grandfather and uh, a red bicycle or whatever. Um, it's just stupid. If, if you put the wrong things in, of course, you're going to get wrong things out. Um, you should understand the algorithms if you want to use data mining because uh, then you know what is garbage when, you, when you're putting in or even can find out what is garbage when it's coming out. Okay, um, there are several types of data mining or uh, typical general um, category categories. That's association analysis, which I will explain further later on. Um, there is clustering, which I will go explain shortly, and classification also very shortly, and regression, which I will just drop. <laughs> And uh, there's also like text mining, which is more or less just a collection of these, especially for um, mining text files and stuff. Or uh, web mining is also one of these big uh, buzzwords currently. Okay, clustering. Clustering is uh, if you have a set of, let's say, users or uh, 
whatsoever. A good example is like maybe a phone company. They are having users um, which have landlines or mobile phones or whatsoever, and they're using SMS and so on. And uh, you're just running these clustering algorithms over it, and you get different clusters out of it. There are one set which is maybe mostly using landline telephones to call to oversee. There are maybe just SMS textures. It's well, you, you get these groups, and uh, afterwards you have to, to even look um, what these groups are doing. But you're getting groups which are connected to each other or similar to each other. The uh, three big algorithms for it, if you want to know, are hierarchical clustering, k-means clustering, the Cohen network, which is uh, another word for um, self-organizing maps, um, and loads more. So just for describing this problem quick, um, shortly, uh, we don't need to this really. The next thing is classification, um, most famously used by, for example, um, banks. Um, yeah, they just put your data in and then decide, okay, you're credit worthy or not. Um, well, you live in the wrong area of London or whatever and you're not credit worthy. Um, that's the bad thing about it. It's not that easy, of course, but uh, um, that's what these algorithms do. Well, there's k-nearest neighbors, decision trees, neural networks, and base networks. Uh, I don't want to go into that either. Okay, the association algorithm uh, analysis. There are two algorithms. Um, from the description point, it's very uh, uninteresting. Uh, what you get out usually is something which is like somebody who buys limes also likes to buy cachaca or brown sugar. Um, or somebody who buys limes and brown sugar would like to buy or is very likely to buy cachaca or even somebody who buys everything free is likely to buy a very overpriced uh, box of ice, ready-made. So um, these are the things we want to get out for Debian, or what I want to get out for Debian, like uh, uh, whoever installed OpenOffice, installed Game, and okay, I, I can't get up with a real good example right now, but they are very likely to install GIMP also, so we can present um, this package very high. And for example, a package of, which is specially made for KDE, very low, because they're not using KDE. Okay, the measures you're going to cope with uh, are support, the so-called support, confidence, and the improvement, which are actually pretty easy measures. Um, I'm going to explain them, but first uh, a bit about the statistical basics about it, behind it. It's very easy um, because it's um, only about dependency. If, uh, if something is statistically dependent on each other, then you can use this. Um, one example would be uh, your chance to, to uh, roll two dice and uh, come out with a result of at least 11. If you don't know anything, um, that's 3 to th uh, 33. I guess everybody can uh, see that. <laughs> um, but if you already know um, the result of the first dice, uh, dice, is it dice, whatever, um, like it is a 6, then you only have to roll a 5 or a 6, so it's 2 to 4 or even 1 to 2, the chance that you're actually going to get to 11. If you, of course, first rolled like one, uh, your chance is zero. Um, um, this is the exact thing. You're going to look what already happened um, and going to apply this to the future, to the new customer, to the new Debian user. So if somebody already has package A, he also likes package B. OK, I'm going to go through a little calculation example. That's most math you're going to see today, I guess. Um, if we're having 100 installs uh, in total, we are having like 50,000 at the moment, I guess. Um, and 50 users of that installed game, um, you're going to have a support of 50% for this package. Or even 50, depending on what you can 
exact definition is. Um, you're having a support of 40 or 40% 40 for GIMP. And um, the one below is um, the users who, all, uh, who installed GAME and GIMP. So we're actually having like 25 users of GAME which didn't install GIMP. That's just the uh, combined set. Okay, from these, you can calculate the confidence, which looks maybe a bit difficult, I don't know. Um, it's really simple. Um, if somebody already installed GIMP, uh, game, um, the chance that he also installs GIMP is 50%. The other way around, you get different numbers. <coughs> Sorry. Um, somebody who already installed GIMP um, is likely to install um, with a 62.5% uh, um, uh, to install game. Okay, that's the confidence. That's um, the, the confidence that your um, rule is correct, correctly applied to this user. Um, you're basically on the left side, that's what, what's history. And uh, the user already has this, this, and this, and the total user base, the other total user base, they install to 62.5% also the package game. So it's just seen over the whole user base. Of course, you might have a user which is a totally different set and uh, is in the other 37.5%. Okay, there's another value that's improvement. That's just um, how much better you are compared to before if you don't know um, what the user installed before. Like the empty set, that's um, the confidence of B. If you have nothing installed before, and the likelihood that he installs uh, GIMP is 40%. That's the support I already told you before. Um, so if you calculate this value, you get in these both cases, both cases uh, values above 100%. So you're getting actually better than if you don't um, consider that they already installed game or GIMP. Is that clear to everybody? I'm getting loads of uh, strange looks at the moment. Yeah? Okay. So that's actually the whole thing behind it. So let's come to my implementation part, the technical part. This is what it looks like. Uh, I left in the buzzwords for fun. Um, you're going to load the data you're, go you're having, um, which is actually just the popcorn data uh, and the packages data, and you load it into your own, um, well, database in my case, and then you're going to run uh, analysis. The loading part is actually called ETL in the business computing world. Uh, it's extract, transfer, load, so it's uh, just one, one of the typical Password bingo words. Um, the BART database, which is optimized for analyzing data, uh, is called OLAP, Online Analytical Processing. It's uh, another one of these miracle words. Uh, I guess you can b sell everything to, to uh, businesses if you combine these two words with uh, business intelligence. So uh, it's one of these really great buzzwords. Okay. Um, this middle part is my computer at home at the moment, which does the analysis and runs through all the data and produces a data set, which is then exported to a web server or later on maybe libapt, which I heard of like two weeks ago. <laughs> Enrico again. Um, okay. Hmm? Yeah. What's about the popcorn data? Well, it's harvested by Debian. I'm a Debian developer. Uh, maybe. Yeah. Uh, the question was how I harvest the popcorn data. Um, there is a package in Debian which is called Popularity Contest. If you install it, um, it sends uh, once a week all the data it collects to Debian server. Okay. Uh, hey. 
I just hmm? ah. uh, I just download everything from the Debian server. I can do that because I'm a Debian developer, so lots of other people here in the room can do it too. It's just stored in, in one special directory. Um, I download it, I get like uh, 18,000 files. Um, and well, nowadays 15,000 files, 50,000 files for each submission one file. And then I put it into my database. Okay. It's just really downloading and putting that up. Okay, um, because you're not going to use all the data, um, or at least there are privacy issues, uh, privacy issues, and uh, some other issues. Um, I'm filtering it, pre-processing it. So um, I'm first dropping everything, um, every Debian package mentioned in the uh, popularity, popularity contest, which is not mentioned in any of the packaging files, which you can get from every every. Um, Debian mirror. So uh, if you have in your popularity contest a file like uh, Linux kernel vers version 2.6.15-kicks-ass, uh, it won't show up. Can uh, I ask a question? Yeah? Um, have you done analysis of packages that are outside of Debian then? You, you just drop them or do you do some sort of general count or anything like that at all? Um, well, a general account is um, already available um, on the popcorn side. Uh, I didn't drop it really. Um, my problem is um, this still is work in progress, so um, I'm going to show you how far I got. Um, I'm trying to to do a little analysis on that, um, but I guess the most well, if you look over it, you get loads of kernel. Um, versions and Opera and uh, Java and like two or three other big commercial um, packages. But of course it might uh, be interesting to look into that deeper. Okay. Um, dependencies. If you're going to leave the dependencies in, you're going to get uh, loads of rules afterwards which suggest, um, well, if you installed any package, you also like uh, to install libc, uh, which is of course pretty unlogical or at least useless um, because um, there are dependencies and uh, they are installed by default anyways because it doesn't work without it. Might be a good hint actually for RPM, but I don't know how far they got now. Um, so I'm filtering that out with uh, SQL and uh, I'm also dropping all the packages which are below a th certain threshold. So if there are less than 10 packages installed for a certain package, uh, I'm dropping it because the it would be statistically very um, doubtful if the number you get is actually ma even mentionable. Okay, um, also I have a little white and black list, but um, I'm using that currently just for, for base packages, which are on installed by default, because uh, you're going to get loads of connections to uh, host name, which is also pretty useless, because everybody has installed that by default. OK, my own implementation. Yeah, sorry. The, with the whitelist, or? And the threshold. How many did you remove? So you said less than 10, for example? Is so that what you use? How many did you remove? I mean, half of them or just a tiny portion? Uh, actually, I never uh, recorded the number, but um, you can you can see it by yourself by going to, to popcorn.demian.org. Um, What's the A limit. Oh Everything that's oh below a limit, um, below 10. Actually, I'm dropping them, not dropping them at, at the moment while I'm building my my internal data, um, because I'm still in experimental phase. Um, but uh, uh, below a certain limit, it's just uh, meaningless. So um, yeah, is that OK? Or um, your, your number. Uh, <laughs> sorry. Um, if you go to popcorn.debian.org, you get a list with all the installed packages. and. Uh, also with uh, installed, the numbers, um, how many 
um, users have installed it. So um, you can count it by yourself, actually. <laughs> but, uh, uh, well, I can also look it up uh, later on. Uh, I've got a, a little problem because um, uh, applying uh, this kind of filter uh, and even using popcorn uh, without uh, knowing that most of Debian developers install popcorn and not most of the users of Debian install popcorn, you will get things like um, uh, everybody install dpkg dev, for example, which is not the most common. Uh right. Um, that's correct. Um, the point is, well, um, there are around 50,000 submissions right now. So we don't have 50,000 um, Debian developers. Well, if every Debian developer has 50 machines out there, um, of course, that would be only showing the typical Debian developer. But still, this data would be useful to Debian developers then. Um, maybe we can get uh, users to use this uh, system then, or the use the popularity contest. And um, well, then afterwards, after more and more users begin to, to use it, actually use it, then uh, it's getting more meaningful for all the developers, or uh, everybody, I mean. Okay? <laughs> okay, uh, I think I had that. My own uh, implementation um, is actually in the database itself. Um, there is a standard for uh, implementing data mining in a database. It's called ISO IEC um, 13249 6 and has a very sexy name of SQL Multimedia and Application Packages Part 6. Um, sounds like a monster. It is a monster. Um, well, after always changing my own um, um, syntax, I uh, thought it might be very helpful, at least for me, and maybe even for others who might want to use the same thing later on if I just keep up to a standard. Well, the whole thing is implemented in PLPGSQL, which is also a strange thing. Um, it's the language which itself is in po um, Postgres. Uh, it's a scriptable language. Um, I just use it because it's uh, it was there. It's um, a proof of concept, more or less, what I'm doing here. And the most of time of the time, you're going to uh, shove around data um, and not um, going to loop in in some some uh, um, uh, in the the actual programming language. So it should not be is, um, a big performance hit. But actually, I found out it is. Um, but anyways, if, if somebody wants to go into details with that, uh, he, can, he or she can up come up later on. Um, the algorithm takes lots and lots of time to finish. Um, actually, it, this uh, first started to work like three days ago. And uh, I'm now at, at 18,000 submissions to process and still like 10,000 to go. And it's, of course, because the data set grows uh, bigger, it's going slower and slower. So I expect it to finish like in a, in a week. And then uh, maybe I can actually get useful data out of it. Um, the algorithm um, itself compresses the data uh, in the data structure very highly. Um, it makes out of like 600 megabytes, um, just like 60 megabytes, I would guess. Um, so you can actually distribute it to a single user, to a user's computer. Um, the rule calculation so that uh, everybody who installed this, this, and this, that can be performed locally. This is actually not working yet, so don't believe me. <laughs> um, it's not, well, I guess I have it working like a few weeks, but um, it's still not implemented, and uh, I hope you won't rip my head off. Okay, the presentation side is uh, pretty simple. Uh, it's currently a website based on Ruby on Rails. Uh, it uses PostgreSQL's T-Search um, 2, which is a full text index. It was just at hand, so I used it. Um, you can actually upload your own popularity contest uh, data to filter the packages which are on the server at the moment. 
it just filters out um, the packages that you already installed and doesn't su suggest them anymore. Um, the plan for later would be um, actually using this huge list of packages and then suggesting the correct package. Um, problem is, I don't have the results yet. Okay, uh, it shows you the neighbors of packages. Um, it actually does that since a few months because uh, that was pretty easy. Um, and well, the suggestions filtered and weighted, that would be the goal uh, after using this huge line of packages. Um, I can show you the website. I just put in game at the moment. Uh, it's actually uh, looks like this since a few months. I think Enrico already seen it, but I don't know. Um, this on the right, well, you can put in any name of any package and it will come up with a list or actually the package. It shows the topic related packages. Um, this data on the right, which you can see at the moment, is actually based on the depth tax data. Without it, it wouldn't work. Um, it's really great that the DevTax project exists. Um, it's like the best result I got uh, up to now. Um, it's pretty simple algorithm. It shows the nearest neighbors of the package by um, calculating how many DevTax um, are different to each uh, to the package. So if there is no no DevTax different, then for game uh, you would get um, all instant messages which have uh, uh, which are based on on gnome which support i guess all the same protocols and so on so um, if you drop gnome and for example at kde the distance would be two so they go down um, that list uh, that that thing is actually online uh, you can use it um, so far, it's dps.parkautomat.net, which is also in the um, announcement of this talk. Um, also, I calculated loads of um, relationships between the packages, those rules I showed you, just, just one package to another. Um, you get something like this on the, bo uh, on the bottom. Um, this is just a list of packages which are installed like every by everybody who installed GNOME. Uh, so it's pretty useless. Somebody deinstalled one of these, so it's a very high confidence that uh, um, this is actually a package you want to, to have. So um, this is unpersonalized and pretty useless. Um, so that's why I'm still waiting for the well, uh, data which is going deeper. Okay, the privacy issue. Uh, as you all can think of, um, uh, you don't want anybody to know um, that uh, there's actually one user who uses these lists of packages and nothing else. Uh, at least I would say it's a bit uh, discussable if that's good or not, um, if somebody installed uh, does know that. So um, that's why the popularity contest data is still not available freely on the internet, but just uh, for Debian developers on uh, on the server. Um, but the so-called FP tree, frequent pattern tree, um, which is generated by this algorithm is pretty distributable. I will show that because uh, first I did this pre-processing thing. So all the packages which are not in Debian are not in this uh, data structure. And also you prune it afterwards, which is of course not working yet because I didn't have a real FP tree yet. Okay, uh, I'll just show what uh, a frequent pattern tree would look like. Um, this is a list. Uh, it starts with OpenOffice org on the top with 50 installs, then to the left evolution with 20 installs, going down to GIMP, uh, five installs and then to the real bottom with game three. Um, 
installed. So you would get a list like, uh, well, there are three people who installed Game, GIMP, Evolution, and OpenOffice Org. Also, you get a list of five people who installed GIMP, Evolution 2, um, uh, Evolution, and OpenOffice Org. This is still below the threshold, and there would could be like uh, just um, saying there's one people who install this, this, and this. But uh, since this uh, law, uh, since I want to enforce this this limit, this threshold, um, you just prune the um, the tree, which looks like this, because game has uh, less than three installs. You um, see that. We, we, well, you could cut away uh, GIMP and then put it to the to the left, to the others. So you get 13 installs who installed Game, Evolution, and OpenOffice Arc. You can't put it to the to the others because, um, well, you could put it to the right, but then the Evolution part would be um, dropped. Anyways, um, this is what a tree looks like at the end. So uh, there are only ways through the tree which have at least a limit of 10 items. So uh, I don't think there's a privacy issue afterwards with this. OK, now conclusion and outlook. My conclusion is I can't say anything <laughs> because uh, um, the last part is not working yet. Um, but I can give you a little outlook what you can, what we can do with the Thing too. Um, what about hardware information in, in popularity contest? It's a big privacy issue, but uh, the possibility would be um, like um, saying uh, everybody who installed a, s a system using uh, this rate controller or the graphic card XY um, also needed this driver or this um, set of tools. Maybe not necessarily everybody, but loads of people. Um, you can also do this per hand, but uh, I guess if it's automated, it would be nicer. It's not must, but possible. Also, same thing applies to um, partitions. Um, the the file type of file um, of the file system. So yeah, maybe somebody who installed NT. Uh, also has an NTFS partition, likes to uh, have files for file rescuing and uh, resetting Windows passwords. Well, um, size of partitions might be interesting too. So everybody who has a little, has just very f uh, small partition size or size overall, they're like uh, more like text-based programs those who have uh, like 50 gigabytes free, they like uh, GNOME and KDE and whatever. Um, but that's just possible for the future and up to discussion. And uh, as far as I know. Do you know the HW info package? What? HW info. It, it harvests a lot of things out of proc, including partitions and and uh, it also on PCs, it runs, uh, I think, DMI decode, and which gets information from the BIOS. It has lots of good information in it that you could parse and put in there. Does it send it somewhere, or? Um, by default, it's just a command line utility, but. Yeah, okay, that would be um, up to inclusion in, in um, popularity contest. Um, um, I just can't remember the name. Reinhold Patterson, I think, is, is the one who maintains it mainly, and he's very privacy um, concerned. Over there, <laughs> um, so I don't know if, if that's actually up for discussion or not. Um, maybe we can talk about that later, or even uh, when I finish, which is like about now. Um, do you have time for like one more slide? Because then I'm finished. <laughs> okay. Um, another one would be, of course, integrating into Lib Apt, um, because um, then everything would be central. Also, uh, my implementation of this uh, ISO thing uh, could be much faster um, if it's only memory-based because I implemented disk-based because I expected everything to grow very huge. Um, and maybe a streaming algorithm would be nice, but that's just uh, up for the future. And well, 
this is documentation if you want to actually look up all the things I'm told you and l want to look deeper into it. One of the big algorithms is a priori. Uh, don't use it. Uh, it's going to waste huge amount of I.O. time and CPU time. Um, I used it for the generation of the uh, suggestions you just saw before on the bottom, which are useless for us. And it took like uh, a week to generate it and generated 22 gigabytes to 22 gigabytes of data. And uh, actually, if you use, um, well, grow this tree like before, deeper, it's going to use two to the power of, um, well, the number of packages you're going to consider. So if you're going to consider 10,000 packages, um, then actually it will be two to the power of, to the 10,000th power. Uh, that's pretty, uh, undoable for any computer to, at the moment. Um, the better one is the one below, that's FP Growth. Um, well, there are tools, open source tools you can use, um, Veka and Jail, well, formerly known as Jail and now Rapid Miner. Those are Java, the Java based um, open source uh, data mining tools. If you want to look into that, uh, they both don't have the FP um, tree, uh, FP growth algorithm. Uh, so don't use it for this problem. Also, there is the standard, and if you don't want to shell out uh, 250 bucks for this standard, uh, you can go to the DB2 documentation of IBM, which actually has most of the standard in, in it. So um, it's pretty readable, these uh, DB2 documentation. Okay, um, I think we can discuss now. <laughs> yeah, I have a small comment and a question. Um, first of all, for the hardware detection part, you should be aware that Ubuntu already have implemented something that will allow the user to submit information about their hardware, what's working or not, uh, and I'm sorry, collecting I'm it centrally. Basically understanding he nothing here. I'm, I'm not sure if that's me or uh, the loudspeaker. <laughs> Okay, I can try to uh, speak uh, louder. Um, for the hardware detection part, you should be aware that Ubuntu already have uh, a tool available to uh, let the user submit information about their uh, hardware with information if the video card is working, if sound is working, like things like that, to a central point. The problem is that that data is not uh, easily available unless you are maintaining that database, I think. Uh, so that might be a good uh, entry point either to port that software to Debian or get access to that database. Um, and uh, my name is Peter Reinholdsen. I'm one of the popularity contest maintainers. And I have a question from us to you. Is there anything we can do within the limits of acceptable privacy that can make it easier for you to uh, build this service for the Debian users? Uh, well, at the moment, I don't think so. Maybe I'll come up in the near future with some points. Um, First, my problem, my big problem is to just finish this, um, my infrastructure to actually generate the rules um, that somebody who's uh, using this website or LibApp can actually use the data. Um, because, well, directly if after I finish that, I have to write my thesis and uh, turn it in, and afterwards I can think about anything else. <laughs> um, but I will come back to that, um, of course. Okay. Yeah, thanks. Hi, I was just wondering, you're keeping all sorts of positive data there, but when you're pruning the tree, are you in fact throwing away information that some users really don't want that utility if there's three people installed it out of 500? Are you throwing that information away? Um, well, that's just a typical issue. Um, I mean, most of the people are using Google, um, and that's ranking um, the search results too. Of course, you don't have to use it. Uh, of course, if you just get uh, hits which don't apply to you just because you once installed the wrong package, um, well, then you don't have to use it. Um, it's not applying for everybody, and that's um, why you're getting um, results like the confidence is just like 50% or 20% or whatever. Um, well, you can't get really much better than that. Hi. Hi. Great you're doing that, and I guess we are going to talk a lot in the next days of DevConf. Mm -hmm. 
uh, because I've been trying to do the same, but I don't have your level of understanding of the theory, so you are actually doing it properly. <laughs> uh, I got uh, as far as finding a library for frequent item set mining that in C++ that's supposed to be very fast, but crashes GCC if you try to compile it. But however, it's code in the public domain, so we can fix it, hopefully, or fix GCC. <laughs> um, so I'm interested to actually find tools also because I will need things like this for other things in DevTech, so we should definitely talk about that. Um, one thing that I developed this morning and the PopCon people don't know about uh, is a bit of shell script that implements a kind of a queue that would allow PopCon to notify, uh, to write somewhere that it's got new submissions and then afterwards we can read from this somewhere and only analyze the recent submissions that arrived, which I need for, because I want to maintain an index of that data. So that allows me to do incremental indexing. I don't know if you will need that as well. Uh, that is something um, else we can talk about. And uh, um, Libapt now has an EPT cache thingy that kind of tries to put all sorts of data together. Of course, I'm interested in any data I could add, um, be it ways of searching things or ways of ranking results. I can already rank by popcorn and there's probably more we can do. Uh, so yeah, thanks a lot. And uh, this will probably start uh, to be a very productive moment. Okay. <laughs> uh, just one short note. Um, I'm just staying yep. here till uh, Wednesday because I have to leave at that point. So um, try to get to me uh, early, not on Wednesday or on Thursday. Yeah, yeah after this talk. <laughs> Hello. Um, I have a question because we in the CDD scope try to use meta packages which have just dependencies and you uh, said you just are sorting out the dependencies. So it is um, from our scope. Um, I want to know, uh, do you uh, sort out this dependency automatically with, without any regard or how do you do it? Are you doing it? I currently just um, see what is based on what and then um, throw it out. Um, it doesn't consider any meta packages at the moment. Well, but uh, if, if, I have, if you have a popcorn result, this meta package is installed uh, 50 times and um, so maybe well, you... Meta packages, uh, you, you mean um, th well, the ones which are not installed or like tasks, something, whatever? Yeah, it's uh, some kind of task. Uh, we have the meta package, for instance, mid bio who stores in, uh, all uh, biological software in, in, in Debian. Also. If that's actually installed, I mean, yeah. uh, if, if there's a package that is installed which has the dependencies, yeah. then these dependencies are thrown out. Okay. So the, the meta mm -hmm. package would be in, yeah. but everything else not. Okay. Yeah. So if Thank you have you. GNOME package, uh, GNOME desktop, uh, all yeah, the GNOME okay. packages would be out. Yeah. Okay. okay, Thank you. Um, uh, the database approach for data mining is, break, is, is collapsing at some point. Do you think, uh, at, with a given size, do you think you reached that uh, size already? Uh, with the a priori uh, one, it totally collapsed at the first. Um, my problem at the moment is um, everything works fine. Well, it grows bigger and bigger, um, but it works. Um, just uh, I can't do it do everything in one step because um, Postgres keeps uh, lock of, of what I'm doing and of every call you're doing um, because it's transaction um, safe. So um, it's actually getting slower the more um, calls I'm doing in my um, um, procedural uh, procedures. So after like 1,000 submissions, um, I have to stop and uh, do it uh, start from that point again. Uh, it actually sort of uh, breaks the algorithm because the algorithm FP growth is based on just scanning the database twice, first to, to get the um, uh, count of each package and then to um, build one big, um, this FP tree, this, this data structure from that. And uh, my problem is, well, I'm doing the scanning and uh, starting to, to put all the 10,000 um, submissions in, and then I have to stop and scan the database from the beginning again, so I'm doing lots of database scans. But with a priori, we would, you would do like uh, millions or billions of, of database scans. 
there are other approaches to that too. Um, for example, Google has a distributed um, uh, method of scanning these kind of uh, data sets. Um, why not use that, something like that? Um, I don't know about the distributed things. Um, I know about the streaming algorithm, which I mentioned on, on there, uh, on, on one slide at least. Um, it's, call, it's called HMIME. It just starts to um, at some point and scans over the whole thing. Um, why I didn't use it? Uh, well, I'm still um, trying to implement this one <laughs> and uh, didn't, didn't have the time to look into anything else. But I have to finish with my master thesis. That's the problem. I would like to, to do all the other things. Uh, things but uh Yeah, there's a Ruby imp implementation for that. So you seem to be Ruby inclined. You could try that. A uh, Ruby implementation of uh, this, this dispute? Yes. Oh, great. <laughs> Do you have any pointers here? Okay, hi. I think this idea is very interesting. I only see one problem. Uh, default desktop uh, task in with uh, the Debian installer installs a lot of packages beginning from uh, starting with GNOME and all its dependencies, Ice Weasel game and all this stuff. So they will r be ranked very highly. So do you treat packages which were installed manually afterwards? Do you uh, rank them higher because of that? I mean, otherwise only g game and, and, and standard stuff will show up. So um, well, as long as you don't personalize um, the whole thing, um, that's the really big problem. My solution would be uh, just to personalize everything. So um, as soon as that program, the lib apt or whatever, which is um, uh, where it is integrated, has your popularity data or you even direct access to um, your, your um, database file, to, to the package file, um, then those are automatically filtered out. So it's no problem anymore. Okay, do you also take in mind uh, to the packages that were removed manually afterwards? That would, that would be interesting too, I mean, there is no way for me to um, follow that at the moment because I'm just based on the um, popcorn data, which doesn't include um, removed packages. Actually, you could um, uh, like weekly um, go to, to popularity contest, pull all the data out and put it in a big database and s uh, look if that package is still installed. But you're going to get into big um, size problems. Yeah. But that's actually a possibility for later um, things, well, implementation. But you maybe it. could, uh, if you know he installed uh, the Debian system with a uh, task cell and, and selected the GNOME task, and you could compare that list with the uh, afterwards installed uh, packages, so you would know if packages were installed or removed from that later. Well, you can't be sure. Somebody might, uh, well, well, if the task is installed, of course, it's already filtered out. Uh, I don't know if, if the newer tasks are still package-based. Um, no. no? Okay, then I don't know if the package is installed or not. So um, I could um, do a little filter um, taking this package list and uh, see if all these are installed and then just drop them if, if they are all installed exactly to the uh, uh, task. Uh, well, uh, I see that we are talking about uh, install package now, but uh, I was thinking that uh, in Popcorn you got also a package you voted for. This means that uh, you have at least one binary inside the package uh, which was used in the last uh, in the last day. No, I'm missing a point. Uh, I didn't get your point. Sorry. Uh, well, there is there is install package and package you voted for uh, something like that. Huh? And uh, the one you voted for, in fact, are packages which are installed, but uh, that you also have uh, used it in the last uh, day or last month, I don't uh, remember. Yeah, uh, in the popularity contest data, there is, um, I think, if you used um, a binary or program in the last three weeks, um, that would be um, usable if you do two models one with all the uh, analyzed and the not analyzed and then combine it into a score afterwards. That's uh, actually, I have like a plan for that, but the problem is uh, every, every like developer file, um, the slash dev things would be left out 
which would be helpful to some people, I guess, still. Uh, somebody who develops with this also like to develop with that. Okay, I still have five minutes, so I guess I have to stop after this. <laughs> um, um, so, uh, actually, there was a discussion on, on the PopCon uh, list just before to integrate uh, PHP files and uh, maybe Python files too. So um, it's getting broader <coughs> if if, you if files are actually used. And uh, well, um, I would still say uh, do two different models and combine them afterwards. It's statistically not that difficult. <laughs> yeah, last I guess. Since we're running out of time, I think there's enough people who are interested that maybe we should have a boff on data mining. Could we do that before you leave town? Uh, yeah, um, that's no problem. Just, uh, well, I'm leaving on Wednesday. Um, Maybe we could gather right after this and talk about right a good time. can gather right after this or tomorrow. No problem. Or, no, I mean just gather and pick a time. Yeah. Okay. Well, one question, one more question or? That okay, um, I'm just one to the wacky idea above, and so one of the wacky idea was to have uh, s like to integrate uh, hardware that information to popcorn will allow us to make pressure on hardware vendors about drivers because we'll have some real number to um, put in front of them. Uh, and also, I was like, there are a few people that have started to work again on packages.debian.org, uh, like to improve the web page in general. And so that distance information and, you know, recommended packages uh, like Amazon does for books or CDs, whatever, would be really good to have on such pages. And uh, a third comment is that I would maybe like to have non-anonymous popcorn data because, I don't know, maybe uh, I tend to, um, you know, I like the way Joey Hess used his computer and I would like to be interested into knowing uh, which data is, you know, um, he, uh, which packages he used and, and can I, um, ha like, you know, uh, try to install the same and see if that fits me. Uh, okay, Enrico, <laughs> because I, I didn't get everything, actually. Well, small comment on that one first. Um, it's an interesting idea, and I'm pretty sure it will fly at least with some people, but I'm also pretty sure it's not called popularity contest. So make another packet and get that uh, spread out. Um, one comment about the, um, the um, feasibility of using popularity contest data. One thing we need to keep in mind is that it's highly inaccurate and only provide a lower limit to the number of Debian installations, and that the vote information is only useful to compare against, uh, to compare similar packages. So you can't compare the votes for a kernel packet or a binary packet with each other. It only makes sense to, com to compare binary packages to each other or development packages to each other or kernel packages to each other, because the vote is very it's a made-up number that doesn't make sense uh, across types of packages. Also, the, uh, the popularity, popularity contest votes are designed to not be affected by cron jobs. That's why most of the stuff in lib is excluded, because uh, every night a cron job uh, re-indexes the ld.so cache. So every library would be used every day if you actually took that access time into account. So we are open to suggestions on how to actually get votes from packages, but it has to make sense and not make them always used by everyone. So, thanks. Um, uh, the time is out, I'm getting a red card over there, so uh, um, maybe you can shout, but... Uh, okay, just uh, very quickly about the idea of uh, looking at what Joey has does. Um, I've recently implemented a very simple uh, metric that shows you what packages you have in your system that other people usually don't. Uh, it's implemented in an EPT cache. I could blog about a command line that gives you uh, a list of packages you could talk about to your friends because obviously you use them and you like them and your friends don't and then you can just ask Joey has to run this command and post the results in his blog.
Okay, um, well, thank you, everybody, and I guess we'll meet uh, and uh, look when we, when we get a uh, time frame for uh, both. <laughs>